In his youth, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban was hailed as a champion of freedom, part of the generation that stood up to the Soviet Union. These days, he's routinely vilified as an authoritarian far-right nationalist whose anti-EU migrant bashing agenda poses a significant threat to Western democratic norms. We've been to find out why. Hungary is unquestionably one of Europe's most beautiful countries. The seat of power Budapest matches any capital for sheer opulence. Its fairy tale parliament is perhaps the prettiest in Europe. But for the last decade, according to critics, it has passed some of the ugliest laws on the continent. Viktor Orban has governed Hungary for 13 years, during which time he has taken steps which mirror those taken by other autocrats. Centralizing power, curtailing press freedom, and attacking NGOs. He likes these kind of new types of authoritarian leaders. They are also the ones who are kind of building the political system that he wishes to emulate. Two basic motives of uh, Orban and this regime is on one hand the concentration of political power and on the other hand the accumulation of personal wealth. His refugee policy is the harshest in Europe. What is happening in Hungary is quite unique. This type of treatment of depriving asylum seekers of food. Winning less than half the votes, his party, Fidesz, in concert with its smaller satellite ally, the Christian Democratic People's Party, nevertheless commands over two-thirds of the parliamentary seats, allowing him to change the country's constitution at will. This is a hybrid regime. It's a new illiberal state at the, in the heart of Europe. It's not the kind of political system that we have seen before. It's a new phenomenon. Last month, Viktor Orban launched Fidesz's campaign for the European parliamentary elections with an extraordinary outburst. Brüsszeli buborékban már a vezető szerephez jutottak azok a politikai erők és érdekcsoportok, akik fel akarják számolni az európai keresztény kultúra elsőbségét. Még pedig abból a nem is titkolt megfontolásból, hogyha a migránsok tömegeinek révén más kultúrák visszaszorítják a kereszténységet, akkor a kereszténységgel együtt a nemzetek is felszámolhatóak lesznek. Echoing this sentiment, a Fidesz poster campaign showed unflattering photographs of European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker and Hungarian-born billionaire George Soros, whom the Hungarian government accuses of sending migrants to Europe. The text read, you have the right to know what Brussels is planning. The, is the affair enraged Juncker, who, like Orban, belongs to the EU's largest political grouping, the European People's Party. It led to the suspension of Fidesz's membership of the group. The irony, say observers of the Orban regime, is that those close to him have done very well out of the EU. A friend of Viktor Orban, Lurins Mészáros. Arguably, he's the richest man in, uh, in Hungary now. And uh, 10 years ago, he was a low-profile local entrepreneur. The companies of his father and his brothers, and they still benefit from EU-funded projects. On the one hand, Orban is bashing the, the EU, and at the same time, on the other hand, his family is, is benefiting and is getting rich through EU funds. It's hard to believe that Europe's bad boy was once hailed as a champion of freedom and played a part in bringing democracy 
to the former communist state. Pastor Gabor Ivanyi had protested alongside Orban against the communists 30 years ago, but is now one of his most outspoken critics. Ivanyi runs shelters for the homeless, the Roma, and for refugees, three groups which have become targets of the regime. Csak úgy születik olyan törvény, például, hogy büntethető az, aki hajléktalan, és ez benne van a magyar alaptörvényben. A világon nincs még egy ország, és hogyha ez demokrácia, a népakaratot fejezi ezt ki, akkor én nem tudom, mi vagyok, mit mondjak, egy béka vagyok, vagy valami. Instead of demonizing refugees, Evanyi gives them jobs, people like Miriam, a nurse who escaped Afghanistan four years ago and now cares for the sick and homeless at one of the pastor's shelters. Acts such as these have put Ivanyi at odds with Orban, whose defining policy has been to attack asylum seekers. In 2015, at the height of the refugee crisis, Orban ordered the construction of a heavily guarded border fence topped with razor wire to keep out asylum seekers. It stretches for 175 kilometers along the border with Serbia. The fence has proved popular with Hungary's many nationalist movements, including the far-right paramilitary group Our Homeland. Köszönöm szépen. Erős erét, kedves hölgyek és urak, bajtársak. They believe the fence should be extended. The fence is just a couple of hundred kilometers. Why stop millions come to Europe? Kénytelenek vagyunk eltűrni, hogy minden évben fővárosunk utcáin vonulgassanak a buzerások, akik a devia... Here in Hungary is a very safe place. Don't need to lock the door, like in London. London is not English city anymore. I love this place. We try to keep this safe. The fence is good. There are just two transit zones along the 175 kilometer length of the fence, which admit a maximum of two people a day. Transit centers are a cruel and tiny space. There is the containers and the barbed wires. Simply knowing that you are locked in for an unpredictable time, um, with an unpredictable future is, a, is a very stressful. But for some of the detainees, this is the least of their worries. In August last year, we've heard of the first cases where people were held in detention in the border transit zones, but the authorities have stopped giving the adults food. If someone is non eligible uh, then obviously uh, he or she or the family should be taking care of themselves. Uh, but keep in mind that if you or myself decide to go to the United States, but our request is turned down, nobody is going to take care of us. What the Hungarian government actually says is that people who have been refused asylum in Hungary, even though they are detained, should not be given food. It smacks of cynicism, you know, and inhumanity. At the same time, recognition rates for refugees in Hungary is among the lowest in the European Union. While you watch state media, you would think that, you know, we're literally being invaded by hundreds of thousands. They will take videos that are completely taken out of context and they will show them on state TV, claiming that it's from a particular time or a particular location. And then if you do some basic fact-checking, you will see that that's not the case at all. This is the border with Serbia now, a far cry from what Orban would have you believe. We found just two asylum seekers waiting for a chance to be admitted into Hungary. Their family is at a nearby refugee center on the outskirts of the Serbian city of Subodica. Zainab and her sisters decided to leave Afghanistan after they were informed that they would be forced into marriage. 
They were pursued across Iran and Turkey by angry relatives and suffered many traumas. When my mom and this, my sister and my little brother, they across the Iran border, the police shoot them to say stop. If you don't stop there, they will beat you too much. Like many before them, Zaina and her family crossed on a dangerously overloaded boat into Greece. We said we don't want to go in that boat for 50, with 55 or 50 people. They said, you have to go. If you don't go, they put the gun uh, here and they said, you have to go. But anyone lucky enough to survive such trials and then make it to Hungary receives little help or sympathy from the state. This is largely provided by charities. Those who support migrant charities are also targeted. The biggest bogeyman is Hungarian-born American financier and philanthropist George Soros. Through his Open Society Foundation, the billionaire has spent hundreds of millions of dollars funding civil society and education projects in Hungary, the country of his birth. With Mr. Soros, we have our, if you like, political differences. He has become uh, a major political influencer um, by his word, by his investments, by the organizational framework and network he maintains. Soros has been vilified in the Hungarian press. Soros György szerint ezt a kerítést le kell bontani, és további milliókat kell betelepíteni Afrikából és a közelkeletről. Stop Soros! Készült Magyarország kormánya megbízásából. I would say that about 75-80% of the media is under the control of Orbán, and it has a huge impact on the public opinion. George Soros, for example, when they started the campaign against him a few years ago, was an unknown and a neutral figure. And it became a figure that everybody knows and everybody hates. Last year, Fidesz passed the Stop Soros law, designed to inhibit the work of NGOs. A legtöbb Magyarországon aktív, külföldről finanszírozott úgynevezett NGO mind ehhez az irányzathoz tartozik, amely ellenséges, kifejezetten ellenséges, mindenfajta természetes, teremtésből fakadó identitással szemben. Critics say this vilification of a prominent philanthropist, who happens also to be Jewish, evokes Nazi-era propaganda. Agnes Heller a renowned Hungarian philosopher who survived the Holocaust is not surprised. She herself fell victim to a Fidesz sponsored anti Semitic smear campaign. He picked Soros. Picked Soros because he was a Jew and, and he, well, he is rich. And people are envious that don't like uh, rich people and they don't like Americans and particularly don't like Jews. Hungary is home to one of Europe's largest Jewish communities. It supports the biggest synagogue on the continent, as well as an internationally renowned Holocaust museum, a chilling testament to the crimes committed by Hungarian fascists in the 1930s and 40s, when half a million Jews were sent to Auschwitz. With rising xenophobia, some here fear the spectre of fascism may return. Many of the Hungarian Jewish families are, you know, ready to leave. Because uh, they know that if, they, they know from their family history that uh, if you have to leave, you have to leave right away. This is a memorial to mark the site where Jewish men, women and children were handcuffed, weighted and thrown into the Danube during the Nazi years, commissioned by the previous administration. But in recent years, Hungary's fascist past has undergone a makeover. This is Orban's memorial to German occupation, situated next to the Hungarian parliament. 
You might be forgiven for thinking that Hungary was a victim of the Holocaust rather than a participant. The memorial of German occupation is about an eagle which comes down to the angel. And Hungary is the angel, and the eagle is the German, which suggests a lie about about the Holocaust, and particularly about the Hungarian role in the Holocaust. Because the whole deportation was carried out by Hungarian gendarmes and by the Hungarian institutions. And instead of digesting this, we're still in a, in, in, in a, in a stage of denial. It's not just Hungary's past that's proving controversial. These people are protesting over Orban's plan to close Hungary's leading educational establishment, the Central European University, known as the CEU, which enshrines the ideas of democracy and liberalism. It is not only about promoting, about preaching about open society, democracy, but it's about studying, you know, imperfections of democracy. The CEU has an open doors policy to students regardless of ethnicity and celebrates multiculturalism, a stance which puts it at odds with Orban, who in 2017 decided to close it, sparking incredulity. Hungarians should ask themselves who benefits here? Does it benefit Budapest to chase an institution out of the country? Does it benefit Hungary? Thousands came out onto the streets, angry and bewildered that Hungary's finest university was being forced to relocate to Vienna. Many believe Orban's loathing for the CEU is down to the fact that it was founded by George Soros though Fidesz deny there's a link, and claim that the university's ability to issue American diplomas is incompatible with Hungarian legislation. It's a matter of uh, uh, rule of law. It is impossible that the CEU or anybody else enjoys the luxury and benefit of issuing American diplomas. That's a simple reason. I think it's a, it's a red flag and it's a warning sign that this might be the, the direction where we're heading, where independent institutions that speak out for human rights, that speak out for the general equality of citizens in a country is being, being chased away. The now inevitable exodus of academic staff and students from Hungary is a microcosm of a much bigger problem. Talented professionals are quitting the country in large numbers. Close to a million Hungarians have left in the last decade, one in 10 of the population. Gergely Kovac heads a satirical group which competes in elections as the Hungarian Two-Tailed Dog Party that regularly lampoons Orban's policies, including those on immigration. He has printed spoof money bearing the faces of Orban opponents. His George Soros 500 foreign note changes hands for 700 foreigns. So we mindig azt javasoltuk, hogy a kerítés helyett inkább egy felüljárót kellene építeni, mivel úgy akar senki jönni Magyarországra, és így elevek könnyen el tudnának menni Nyugat-Európába. But the shortage of skilled workers is now becoming serious. So Orbán's government came up with a novel solution. A law allowing employers to insist that staff should work up to 400 hours a year in overtime. People quickly dubbed it the slave law, and this is what sparked yet more protests in Budapest, which began last December, lasting several months. Employers might not have to pay for this extra work for three years. The slave law could have been used to make people work such long hours that they would not have a weekend, and payment would be so delayed that by that time, maybe the company would even go bankrupt and you would never get paid. For the first time, demonstrations spread to other towns, quickly becoming a nationwide phenomenon. Something else happened too. 
That was the first time when uh, uh, the opposition parties stopped talking about cooperation and stopped talking about how bad the situation, but went on the street and started to act. Anna Donoth quickly emerged as the poster girl of the protests. Everybody felt angry and frustrated. That moment, there were no labels. That moment, there were a community, a group of people at the streets who feels the same. Parliament was under siege. It was the most sustained threat to Orban's power for years, but he managed to ride the storm. With a country deeply divided, the scene was set for a very bitter Euro election in May 2019. Anna would become one of Momentum's first MEPs. But there was never any doubt who would win. Orban's fierce anti-migrant rhetoric was again sufficient to secure victory. But it's not the first time Hungary has been sealed off from the outside world. Some people are old enough to remember what it was like when the Iron Curtain divided Europe in much the same way Orban's border fence now separates Serbia from Hungary. Today, the old Cold War frontier is a popular cycle path and people move freely between Hungary and Austria. Back then, try to exit without permission and you'd be in big trouble. Alapvetően a tiltott határsértést ö, ö, megkísérő személye szemben 1988. november 28-áig a déli és a nyugati határszakaszon, tehát a jugoszláv és az osztrák határszakaszon kifelé a felszólításra nem állt meg, fegyvert lehetett használni. In August 1989, Colonel Bella Arpad was in charge of a border post near the city of Sopron, where the communist government sanctioned a pan-European picnic in the name of good neighborly relations. Hungarians were to pass the frontier bearing wine and sausages. The border would be open for three hours, but things didn't go according to plan. Hundreds of East Germans fleeing their own country's dictatorship got wind of the event and rushed south through Czechoslovakia to the border crossing. Arpad had to decide whether to open fire. Teljesen szintén mondom, azokban a pillanatokban vagy percekben engem az izgatott legkevésbé és nem is foglalkoztatott, hogy ezzel milyen lavinát indítok el. Én azt a pillanatnyi helyzetet szerettem volna megoldani emberségesen és békésen. 600 East Germans escaped to the west. More than 60,000 would follow. The Berlin Wall became untenable and the East German dictatorship collapsed. Arpad inadvertently triggered the end of the Cold War. For many, living around Orban's border fence, like Robert Molnar, the mayor of Cuba Casa, the historical ironies are inescapable. És erre a kerítésre is majd úgy fogunk tekinteni, mint az Orbán, mint annak idején a vasfüggönyre, amely az osztrák-magyar határon épült. Embereket, embereket választott el, és lehet látni, hogy az a, az a kerítés az osztrák-magyar határon az nem feltétlenül embereket, zárt el attól nyugatra meneküljenek, hanem Magyarországot zárta be 40 esztendőre. Hungary has never been more polarized. With Fidesz having won the Euro elections, many are wondering what's next. Could the country move yet further to the right? Ez a választási győzelem egy megbizatás három dologgal. Először is azzal, hogy állítsuk meg egész Európában a bevándorlást. Megbíztak azzal, hogy védjük meg a nemzetek Európáját, és biztosak lehetnek benne, hogy mi ezt is fogjuk tenni.